this has got to be one of my favorite models of the entire classroom. This is the big head model. You can see so much on this model. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at just the cranial nerves. So let's turn this around here. And we can see laying in the uh, cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. It's marked number one and two on the model. This is the bulb of cranial nerve one. This is olfactory nerve. If we go around here, coming through the optic canal, we see cranial nerve two, that is optic nerve. Turn this around a little bit. We're going to see this one here, which is marked number five. This is cranial, cranial nerve three, oculomotor. Then we have cranial nerve four, trochlear. If we follow this, we can see it going up to the superior oblique muscle. That's how you can always tell this is trochlear nerve. It's cranial nerve four. This big guy here is our friend trigeminal. So we have trigeminal, cranial nerve five. We have the ophthalmic division going through the superior orbital fissure. We have the maxillary division going through foramen rotundum. And if you follow it out, you can see it will come out of our infraorbital foramen just below the eye. And now it's called infraorbital nerve. That's also a branch of five sub two. Going back to our trigeminal, we have five sub three, our mandibular division going through our foramen ovale. This comes down. For this class, we don't name the first one. That's our buccal nerve. This is our second one, which is our lingual nerve. And this is our third one, which is inferior alveolar. These are three branches of five sub three. If we follow inferior alveolar down, it is going to go into the mandibular foramen, which is in the mandible of the ramus that's missing. It's going to go through the bone and then it's going to come out the front through the mental foramen. When it comes out the mental foramen, it is now called the mental nerve. So the mental nerve is a branch of five sub three. Let's go back. We did five. We're going to go back, turn the model back around and pick up this one which slips up here. Uh, this is number six, this is abducens. It's going to slip up and also go through the superior orbital fissure. It's number six. Then we have two right here. You recognize, I hope this is the petrous portion of the temporal bone. So we have seven and eight. Seven is facial, eight is glossopharyngeal. Down here, this is going to be our jugular foramen, we have 9, 10, and 11. 9 is glossopharyngeal, 10 is vagus, and 11 is spinal accessory. Down here, our hypoglossal canal holds our hypoglossal nerve, which is cranial nerve 12. And here we have our spinal cord going through foramen magna. Let's turn this model around again. And we're going to notice this is also cranial nerve seven coming down. This is cranial nerve seven, which is our facial nerve. It's exiting the stylomastoid foramen. There is a branch of facial nerve that comes off that goes around the tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane. You might remember that from our ear model. So this one coming around and hooking up with lingual, this branch is called the corda tympani. And this branch is a sensory branch that is going to take taste signals back to cranial nerve seven and back to the brain. Okay. Also what we can see coming through here, this is our jugular foramen. So we have one, two, three nerves coming out. This is nine, glossopharyngeal. This is 10, vagus. We know it's vagus because we can see it between the common carotid artery in the internal jugular vein. And this is 11, we can see that going down to trapezius here. So that is spinal accessory nerve. So that is all 12 cranial nerves, plus a few of their significant branches on the big head model.
we can also see a, quite a few uh, muscles on the big head model. Let's come up close and look at the eyeball muscles first of all. You can see I mentioned this coming through the sling, which is called the trochlea. We can see the superior oblique coming at an angle. You see that? And remember on the eyeball model, all we can see is the tendon of it. This one, which is straight, is superior rectus. If we come over to the side, the one on the side is lateral rectus. Okay. You can see that's a cut muscle. Underneath, we have inferior rectus, which is the straight one. Coming at an angle, we have inferior oblique. We go all the way over to the side on the medial side, we see medial rectus. Uh, for medial rectus, I'm going to ask that you not remove the eyeball from the model. Just appreciate that it is there. We're going to go back and look at a few more muscles which are um, infrahyoid and suprahyoid muscles. Let's look if we can underneath the hyoid bone. So this is our hyoid. The one that is the most medial in the center here, we cannot see its origin on the sternum, but this one is sternohyoid. The one next to it, which is at an angle, see it's more angular as opposed to straight up and down, starts on the shoulder, this is omohyoid. This short one here, going from the thyroid, which we can't really see, to the hyoid bone is thyrohyoid. And the one that is not shown is sternothyroid. All four of these muscles, sternothyroid, omo, I'm sorry, sternohyoid, omohyoid, thyrohyoid, and the one which is not seen, sternothyroid, are all innervated by ansa cervicalis. Those are our infrahyoid muscles. If we turn this around above the hyoid, we also see our suprahyoid muscles. We see the anterior belly of digastric in the anterior to posterior position. And then medial to lateral, we see our mylohyoid, that's the one that makes the floor of the mouth. Both of these are innervated by branches of five sub three. If we turn the model around from a different viewpoint, we can see mylohyoid. These muscles are in the anterior to posterior direction. And then deep to that, we see a muscle going I'm sorry, these go in the medial to lateral direction. The muscle above it, geniohyoid, starts at the geniotubercle and goes down to the hyoid bone. This goes in the anterior to posterior direction. This is innervated by C1, which is a spinal nerve, not a cranial nerve. We're going to follow, go back here and follow our post anterior digastric through this tendon and around. This is posterior digastric. Posterior digastric here, with the tendon of mylo, uh, stylohyoid, excuse me, stylohyoid wrapping around it. These two muscles are both innervated by facial nerve seven. So, posterior belly of digastric, stylohyoid, anterior digastric, mylohyoid, and over here, geniohyoid are all suprahyoid muscles. We can also see coming off the mastoid process, we know this is the mastoid process because this was our style of mastoid foramen. We can also see uh, the, the attachment of sternocleidomastoid and here is spinal accessory nerve number 11 going right to it. If we look over here, we see two muscles of mastication. The one that is deep to our Inferior alveolar and lingual nerves is our medial pterygoid, and the one here is our lateral pterygoid. Both of these are innervated by five sub three mandibular division of trigeminal, as are the other two muscles of mastication, which are not shown on this particular model. But wait, that's not all. We're going to look at vessels, glands, and other landmarks. First thing I'd like to show you is the lacrimal gland. This is on the, um, on the superior lateral portion uh, above the eye, and the tears are produced here and go inferior medially. They wash over the eye. That's an important gland. Then if we look down here, we see another gland. This is the submandibular gland. 
here, submandibular because it's below the mandible. We also see the thyroid gland here underneath our thyrohyoid and the cartilage in the center is our thyroid cartilage. We see a couple of important vessels. Down here we're looking at the common carotid artery. It's called common carotid because it has not yet bifurcated. Once it bifurcates, it changes names. This branch, the external carotid artery, is going to go to the face. It's going to supply the face. This branch is the internal carotid artery. It's going to go up to the brain. This makes sense because you want to keep your face external and you want to keep your brain internal. Between the common carotid artery and this vessel, the internal jugular vein is where you always find your vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10. So this is our internal jugular vein exiting the jugular foramen. So if we follow our carotid, common carotid, internal carotid up, we see it again here entering the brain. It entered through the common carotid, excuse me, through the carotid canal, and now it is entering the brain here, just below cranial nerve number two, which is our optic. So this is also the common carotid, the internal carotid artery. I'm going to turn this over and show you a few structures on the back side, or the inside, I should say. So here I want to point out our ethmoid sinus up here. We have our superior and middle nasal concha, which are, these are all part of the ethmoid bone. Down here we have the inferior nasal concha, which is its own bone. This large sinus here is the sphenoid sinus. The region here for passage of food is the pharynx and the region here for passage of air is the larynx. The pharynx can be divided further into three regions. Behind the nose we have the nasopharynx, behind the oral cavity we have the oropharynx, and behind the larynx we have the laryngopharynx. Laryngopharynx just means the pharynx by the larynx. It's just an easier way of saying it. Although laryngopharynx isn't as much fun to say as the pharynx by the larynx. This is the epiglottis, that's a little bit of hyaline cartilage that is going to flop down and close off the airway um, so that food does not go into the larynx. We also find in the larynx these two folds, that is our false and true vocal folds. And I think that is the, uh, the majority of the structures on the big head model for this class. This small C-shaped bone is the hyoid. The hyoid has no bony articulation with any other bone in the body. It's held by suprahyoid muscles above it and infrahyoid muscles below it. This is, the mus this is the bone that is going to move up and down with the movement of the supra and infrahyoid muscles to open and close the throat.